to God in the highest for his love and for his care for each one of us in the last time when we met. I'm grateful that he has continued to renew each one of us, myself included, as we gather around his table to break fresh bread from the ovens of heaven, even to the glory of his name. We take our reading today from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 21, we'll read verse 17. John 21, verse 17. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me with a deep, instinctive, personal affection for me as for a close friend? Peter was grieved, saddened, and hurt that he should ask him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you with a deep, instinctive, personal affection as for a close friend. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Peter who had abandoned the cause, Peter who had fled, was restored to hope and to service. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we are grateful to you for the restoration with which you restore each one of us, calling us, despite the fact that you know our past, yet calling us to serve you. As we ponder and reflect on your word, come speak to us. Come in, fill us. Come empower us this one more time. For the sake of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Jesus coming to the disciples. Jesus, who I mean, Peter, who had said to his fellow disciples, I am going back fishing because the master is dead. And Jesus coming to restore him. He speaks to him and asks him that personal question. Peter, son of John. Or like it says in the Old King James, Simeon by John. Do you love me? Jesus didn't call him Peter. Despite the fact that it is him who had called him Peter who had changed him from being wavy wavy to steadfast. He calls him with his old name, saying to him, I know your past. I know your weakness, but I'm still calling you. And so Jesus speaks to us this morning. He knows our past. He knows our failures. He knows our misdeeds. He knows our mishaps. He knows our misdemeanors. He knows our misses, yet he's calling you and asking you, do you love me? The key word is love because he knows our past, yet he still calls us. He knows your academic levels, yet he still calls you. He knows your temperament, but he still calls you. He knows your financial history, yet he still calls you. He's asking you a simple question, do you love me? Is it deep? Is it personal? Is it relational? He calls to restore you, to have that hope in him this one more time. That's why Peter is hurt. He says to him, Lord, you know everything. Everything is revealed to you. I'm an open book. You know that I love you. And Jesus accepts what he says. And then he gives him a charge. So this morning, despite your shortcomings, Christ is still asking, do you love me? Are you willing to come to him? And say, I'm an open book. You know I have failed you. You know I have fled. You know I have dropped the course. But here I am. I love you deeply. 
Do you love Christ deeply? That is the question to you this morning. Because this restoration to hope is also restoration to service. Service that will call for perseverance. Service that will call for endurance. Service that will call for you to go the whole hog and not give up part of the way. This service, Jesus says to him, feed my sheep. Now this is the third charge. This is the charge given to Peter a third time. The first one, he says to him, feed my lambs, these weaklings, these younglings, these sucklings, make sure food is close to them. Then he says to him a second time, tend my sheep. In other words, look after them. They will just need a little bit of care. They look after themselves. But he says they are sheep in the fold that will need feeding like young ones. People who will not understand. People who will be slow to learn. People who will doubt. People who will flee. Are you willing to love me deep enough for their sake? That is the crux of the matter this morning. That our love to Christ is measured not by the words that we express to him, not by the flowing, the poetic way that we express ourselves before him, not by the way we give our resources, but by the way we tend and take care of others. This is restoration to hope, and this hope must give way to service. Service even to those who may not be deserving. Serving, service even to those who may be unwilling. Service to the weak. Service to the underlings. Service to the underdogs. Service to the ill-equipped. Service for the sake of Christ who has restored us to this hope. The hope that does not disappoint. You have been restored this morning. The challenge is for you to go out and seek the lost. Seek the wounded. Seek the big yet needy. And serve them in the hope that Christ has restored you to. Will you go forth like Peter? Are you an open book? That says, despite my past, despite the way my past has shaded my present, my future is pegged on the hope of restoration and service. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we are thankful this morning for calling us this one more time to gather, for calling us this one more time to question ourselves, for calling us this one more time. And even we would gather to simply say, Here I am, use me, Lord. Here I am, I'm ready to persevere. Here I am, ready to go the whole hog because of the way you have loved me and restored me. So hear this prayer, which we offer to you in simplistic faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, I commend you into the hands of the living God. May the road rise to meet you as you travel. May the wind blow gently upon your back. May the sun shine softly in your face. And may the fullness of hope of the restoration to service infill you. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be your portion together with the ones you love as you serve the God who restores, both now and forevermore. Amen. Restored to hope and service in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes.